Hello everyone, again, my name is Matthew Carpenter. Uh, once again, my wife Jamie and I, we attend the New Life Conway campus and we're plugged in there with our five kids. And I'm a local financial advisor. Over the last two days, I've been given the privilege to talk to you about our relationship with Jesus and with money. I know you're excited for a second day around money. I'm excited as well. So I wanted to recap real short about what we talked about yesterday. Yesterday, we talked about a verse out of Proverbs. Uh, a rich man's ransom is his wealth, but a poor man hears no threat. And, we, and I challenged you with the opportunity to go before God and ask, what in my life am I holding so strong onto that if I lost it, that I would lose some belief in God, some faith in God, what in my life, what dollar amount in my bank account would make me start to doubt the goodness of God, his provision over my life? I do not want to be ransomed. I want to live a life that is full and good and to trust the resources that God has for me. The verse that I got today, and, and I called that a fire tester verse. So another verse that I have that we're going to do uh, is, called, is out of Proverbs as well. It's Proverbs 30 verses seven through nine. I'm just gonna read it to you. Two things I've asked of you. Don't refuse me before I die. Keep deception and lies far from me. Only feed me with the food that is my portion. Lest I be fool and deny you and say, who's the Lord? Or lest I be in want and I steal and I profane the name of my God. The, the problem with this verse is, is we don't know what we have. The problem with this verse is, is we don't know what we have. You see, God's storehouse, once again, is much larger than we, what we could ever dream or imagine. And oftentimes, how we see other people provisions, see other people's provisions or our own provisions really is a good indicator about what we believe about God. Once again, we all have our own journey in our own relationship with God. How I view somebody else's poverty or somebody else's prosperity through a certain lens really Will, will tell me the state of what I believe God has in store for me and how I steward what I have. So if we each have our own journey, then that means that someone could be called to go live in a poverty-stricken neighborhood, to go build a house there or live in a rent house and to give away all their possessions, to go blend in with a group of people and to just love on them and and to live that way and to steward that well somebody else may be called to live in a big old ranch with a house barns and their heart is to bring addicts out to their house to find freedom where they can work on the land and and to work with their hands and to find love and a second chance uh, or life groups, a big place to have life groups or, or things like that. Every single one of us has our own journey when it comes to the lot that God has in store for us. And sometimes it is much bigger than we could ever dream of. And sometimes it's smaller than what we think. We think, man, I, I want this big old house and fence. And really maybe he's pulling on me to, to live a different lifestyle. You see, Jesus, he didn't tell every rich person in his time to go give away their money. He did tell one rich young ruler, hey, give away your possessions and come follow me. See, God knew the status of his heart because maybe the status of his heart was, lest I be fool and deny you and say, who's the Lord? Or maybe I'm in such a place of poverty that I need to work, I need to earn money I need to help fuel the kingdom. Maybe I have a gift that I didn't know that I have around finances and stewardship that I can that I can gain 
generational wealth that, that I can shift a whole, a whole generation uh, and funnel uh, the needs of the nations. And so the challenge that I have for us today is, is that we have a trust in God for our provisions. There's this funny verse in Ecclesiastes that says, everyone to whom God has given wealth and possessions and power to enjoy them and to accept his lot in life. This is the gift of God, for he will not much remember the days of his life because God keeps him occupied with joy in his heart. So for whatever that God has given you, whatever God has given you, he's also given you the provision of power to manage that. And he's also giving you the opportunity through the Holy Spirit to be full of joy. Whether you are living with a lot of money or very little money, it's your call and you are responsible for that call alone. And so I want to challenge you today. God, grant me what, what I need for today. I want to be like Paul, whether I have a lot or whether I have a little. I want to be called to your heart for my life. I don't want to look down on what other people have or look up to them and want what I don't need. I want what you have for me. And it could be a lot more or it could be a lot less. And so I encourage each of you in your journey today to take that before the Lord and be blessed today. Talk to you later.